Hello, welcome to The Form. We've got a Group 1 race day out of Hastings on Saturday. The Group 1 Arrowfield stud plates. We've also got the Hawks Bay Guineas coming through from there as well. We've got the three wise men along with me to chat. So all things thoroughbred racing, Lee Thinnis, Aidan Rodley and Bevan Sweeney. We'll get to them very shortly. This is what you can look forward to on The Form today. We take you to Hastings with the Group 1 Arrowfield stud stakes and the Hawks Bay Guineas. Race trackers, what have the lads found? Rickard and Park preview, good day down there. And today on Friday they have a decent card with the Manicato coming through from Australia and our final talking point as always will be the best bets here on the form. <music> Starting away at Hastings, Bev and Sweeney, weather and track conditions out of the bay? Well it's good for at present uh, they've had to put a little bit of irrigation on Matt. Uh, Friday there is a little bit of rain forecast so It'll be a real watch about how much does fall and whether they need to put a little bit more uh, irrigation on. But it could be as much as 10 millimetres uh, falling on Friday. If that is to happen, I think with the wind that is around, etc., into Saturday morning, we should be shopping you know, on a good full track condition, which uh, is a little bit different to what we've had in recent times in the central districts. Yeah, it'll be race number seven on the card. Let's have a look and see what the action is on tab.co.nz. Skew with open 4.40. She's now $4.20. Malt time could be a big day for Bill and Carrie Borry. It was second in this race last year. She's $5 second favourite. The Stephen Marsh runner, El Vencedor at six. Faraglione at six. And Mally Ston at $7. Let's take a look at the speed map first of all. Leith, as we bring you in. Yeah, certainly, uh, Matt, it looks like there's going to be a really good sort even tempo. Uh, Al Vincent is probably going to come out of gate four with the uh, emergencies if they don't make the field. So, uh, look, Rolls, if he gets in, he's too balanced. He's probably the natural leader in the race. Uh, Fiora Galoni, she's going to start from barrier eight. So uh, they'll go forward with her. Pentura just leaves a horse like Ski Whiff. Probably hope he's probably going to be sort of fourth, sort of one out. Uh, Massey and Valley will go forward. Mascot, he has no speed. Mold time from her draw is going to have to go back as well. OK, let's have a look at Faraglione running second in the Westbury stud Tarzino trophy. Of course, it was all honours to Grail Seeker on this particular occasion. No Grail Seeker on this occasion, Bevan. No Grail Seeker, and this race was won really strongly early. So Faraglione, who sat just in behind that speed, has been very good. I met Faraglione to go sit outside El Vencedor. I know there's a little niggle around the 1,600 metres with Faraglione, but I'd love to see her get a Group 1. Stewith was very good. I think they were a match uh, of each other in this uh, particular event. Leith, look, she deserves one, and if she rolls across and gets a decent sort of sit outside lead, she's got to be dangerous and skew with very good. Yeah, she was really good there in that race. Uh, obviously, she was uh, drawing barrier two, and uh, look, obviously, she's going to come out of barrier eight. But um, I think Jonathan will be positive. Uh, look, Al Vincent does look like the leader in the race, so uh, you'd think that Jonathan can probably sit outside without doing too much work. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? That's the key form line. Uh, I think 11 of the last 14 winners of the Arrowfield stud plate, obviously with uh, different names in previous years, have come through the Tarzino. It is the key form line. And we did see some decent runs. Farrell Leone was really good from the trail. I agree with Bevan. I, I had the horse mapped on the outside of uh, the likely leader for mine and El Vincent, which just where does uh, skew if get? If the horse gets in, as, as Bevan suggests, then... Wow, she's got to be the, I, I think, the horse to beat. Her run was very good and with good sectionals in the Tarzino. Let's take you to the Ruakaka form lines. Malt time's been very good this day. This is some performance. It keeps on producing these types of performances at Ruakaka. I thought Pearl of Alsace, who comes right down the very outside, was very good. There's going to be improvement in El Vencedor. Some sort of win from Malt time, but uh, how does this form relate to weight for age level now, Lee? Look, I, I think it's a really good uh, race to watch. Obviously, uh, Malt time, she's come home in uh, just a tick under 34 seconds. Uh, Pearl of Alsace was pretty good. She was on the sort of slower part of the track as well. And uh, Al Vincedor, he, he went a cheeky, cheeky race fresh up. Obviously, the mile's probably not as pet distance, but um, I think you know, the race at Ruakaki, I think those three horses can definitely uh, show up this week. Completely agree. Completely different form line coming in. The, the really big niggle is just where Malt Time will get to in the run from that particular gate. It's hard to see Malt Time getting in anywhere in front of uh, midfield. So I think they have to go back with Malt Time. She would have to unleash uh, a very similar session, or even better than she did on that occasion, to win this uh, particular race. Is she a little bit better uh, right-handed than left-handed? That might be a slight question mark as well, but she's been to the bay and been very good uh, prior. 
I was very keen on her before the draws came out. I think it's tough. Now, is Maliston the forgotten runner in this particular race as well? Mustang Valley, if you got rain, uh, Puntura, I actually thought was really good uh, in both runs, this uh, preparation. But look, we were down in record in 12 months ago, Leith, and we sort of thought that Maliston might put up a run there. He clearly wasn't at his best through that period. But this return would suggest he's getting back to somewhere near his best. And, look, he's not too far off them if he gets the right run. No, he's certainly not. Um, look, he's a forgotten horse for sure in the race, uh, Bevan. Um, look, they've given him a, a, a good break uh, from the Foxbridge to uh, this leg. And uh, I think the step up to the mile is going to really suit him. And, uh, gee, from the inside draw, they'll be positive And he'll probably sit probably, uh, you know, two pegs back, uh, maybe even in the trail. Yeah, absolutely. The run was was outstanding. There's also some really good runs in behind. I thought Mustang Valley was was excellent. Obviously, they've missed their their lead up, but Andrew Forsman saying that he thinks that uh, Mustang Valley is going in better than last year, and she won the race last year as well. So uh, that says a fair bit as well. Just three of the last uh, ten winners of the Tarzino have come through the Foxridge Plate. So just bear that in mind as well. Though that's a, a skew of reference twice. Let's get you into Wanganui. This may be the B grade form. Let's see. Has to Koyu Sassbaum, Cable Stakes winner who's uh, sneaking in but with a wide barrier draw. We know one bold cat, he's got the, the ability, he's won 7 of 17. Uh, St. Bethan's also in this lead. How does this form equate? Yeah, I obviously don't think they all had this race in, in mind. Um, I think it was a sort of a, look, we'll, we're in the field, um, we'll have a throw at the stumps. Um, just, I think, at Wait for Age, they, these whole three uh, may struggle this week. She's pretty smart, Hoyo says, Bomb. Uh, she's been competitive in top class before. Look, she's another one. She'll be back there with Malt Time, Hoyo says, Bomb. So they would have to unleash an incredible sexual to actually win this race. Look, wait for one bold cat uh, in a couple of weeks. That's where one bold cat will be really uh, competitive. The blinkers do go on him. He, he'll run a race at 1,600 metres, but uh, it is hard to see. Either of those winning on the facts that one bold cat needs further mat and Hoyo says, Bomb is just going to get a long way back in the run. OK, let's hear from some of the connections, starting away with Stephen Marsh chatting El Vencedor. I, th I think he's a horse that's, you know, ready for, you know, we want to wait for age, but he's ready for good, strong weight for age racing now. Um, he looks a complete product. Mile suits and just can't wait to get him to the liver mole um, a fortnight later. Hey, look, it wouldn't surprise me if he won it, but I'm not, you know, it is a group one and they don't give them away. Um, his work's been good, he's brightened himself. If he travels well and, he, um, and, he, and he's uh, settled on the day, if we got rain on the day, it'd be enhances chances even more. He's been competitive around these sorts of horses before, um, just probably not at weight for age. That'll be the big difference for him, uh, but we thought it was the right time to give him his, his chance. Mustang Valley goes back to a race where she has won. Uh, has she done in preparation for this? She's coming up really well. Um, clearly the, the track conditions are going to be com completely different to last year when she won so well, um, but couldn't be happier with her going into it. She went to Waikato Stub for three or four days after the run in the Tarzino got some of their good Waikato grass into her and, and it's bought a coat on. She was real shaggy in the coat down at the Tarzino, but she's come on for that. And listen, she's really well, but the key to her is a good draw, smother her up. She's only got a short sprint. Yeah, I think we're there. I think our big, our main stage is the last day, the liver mall. You know, she ran third in the last year and we're just going to go back this year and try and go two better. So. I'm going to go with the CD Raider in Fair Leone. I really did love the run on the first day. I know there's uh, a little bit of a niggle around the 1600 metres, but I think if Skillworth is three, four lengths uh, off Fair Leone as they turn, and she won't sit down. She's a really tough mare. I'd love it to happen uh, for Josh. Uh, he's uh, a small trainer in the Central District with a very good mare, and she probably deserves a Group 1 victory, and I hope she gets it Saturday. Yeah, I think there's probably four or five really realistic winning chances. Um, I'm going to go for Malt Time. Uh, I think Ace Lawson Carroll, um, look, he's he's riding with a bit of confidence at the moment. And, uh, look, he's a 20-year-old. And, uh, look, everyone gets on with him. So uh, he's going to have to put in that perfect ride from gate 14. But um, I think Malt Time, she ran second in the race last year, can win this week. Yeah, that would be a feel-good win, wouldn't it, uh, to see Malt Time there. One stat about that, Leith, uh, of the last 11 runnings, uh, every winner has either been second or third up. Uh, Malt Time's a lot deeper into the preparation. So uh, I'm going to go skill with. I, I found it really hard to split skill with from Farrah Leone. I thought they were the two key uh, chances here. If skill with can get in, if the horse isn't uh, trapped three wide, then I think she wins the Arrowfield Stud Plate.
Got a cracking field for the Hawks Bay Guineas this year with the AHD Animal Health Direct and the favourite captured by Love. The only filly in the race, not many fillies have done it. Sav Glee at 440, Poetic Champion, who was super last start at $6 and so naive. Seven whiskey and roses at $8.50. There's been some good horses along the way. Take this out and obviously go on and take out the 2,000 guineas. I'm going to start away with the first video, which is Poetic Champion here, Leith. And uh, this horse was able to beat Savaglee last time out. Look, he was massive, Poetic Champion. Um, look, he, he had an easy enough lead and sort of really sprinted off the uh, sort of home bend. Savaglee was probably the run of the race, Matt. You can see just held up there turning in and uh, there was nothing hitting the line as good as Savagley and uh, Sam rode him a little bit neutral. I think this week over a uh, 1400, she'll be uh, probably two spots handier than she was last time. He was good, wasn't he, Leith, though? He, I know he got it uh, quite soft in front. Probably the biggest question mark with a horse like him is whether he'll run a really strong 1400 metres. But it, when he was asked in that last 150, he really found the line again strongly. But Savagley, yeah, Sam just got a little bit lost there, uh, to be honest with you. Sprinted very, very well. When you compare the captured uh, with love uh, times and sectionals with a Savagley, maybe the last 200 metres goes to Savagley. But look, you've got to be very respectful of captured by love. She's uh, a top class as well. But Savagley, man, that turn of foot really caught me on day number one. I think then maybe a victim of circumstances just got into a position where they were okay early but then as sort of speed came into the rush she just got shuffled back and uh, and when Sam wanted to go for the run you know she's she's back last the, the run was full of merit so too was uh, Poetic Champion um, Super Photon's not that far off them out of that as well but you did speak about uh, Captured by Love let's have a look at her efforts for second chased home Alabama Lass uh, while all the best sectionals were with Damask Rose Captured by Love's uh, sectionals were all the second best, you know, 8642. But as well as that, she was very willing in her chase. She won each of her first four starts and uh, three of those at group level before running third placings in two group ones. How do the, does the filly uh, come up against these, Leaf? Look, she's uh, really grown as a three year old as well. Um, being by Red and Tycoon, uh, you would sort of be a little bit of a question mark if she's going to get 1400 a mile, but just on type. Um, she looks super and uh, look I've got a sort of she'll go forward from the gate um, Warren Kennedy's had two rides on her for a win and a placing as well yeah I found this big bit interesting and I agree that she is a cracking type when she walked into the big cage uh, at Hastings having a look at her I thought Captured by Love might get the back of Savagley actually and in that scenario I thought it was a real match race because I don't think Poetic Champion Gets it soft in front with Bilardi in the race. Look, they were going to take full force back last time. They simply couldn't do it. So I think uh, uh, there's no real option with full force. So there's not going to be that real bit of peace in front for Poetic Champion. And that might just be an issue at the, uh, over the last uh, 50 metres. But I think you can still win uh, Poetic Champion. But keep it by love, Savagley. I think they might be sprinting hard with uh, each other. This is uh, uh, so naive who... Wow, made a real impression. Now, the track conditions, clearly, as you can see there, will be very different on Saturday. Has that sort of action, I think, Leith, that probably gets through track conditions. But, look, you can't knock this because this was pretty good late. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, look, he's had a good freshen up since then, both of them. Uh, full force has come out of that race, and uh, he's definitely improved on that first up run. Uh, I know Grant Cooksley's really happy how they're both going, and uh, Craig Rule sticks as well, so it's a bit of a plus. Yeah, the second horse was good too, wasn't it? Turek Mack too, uh, really good. But I, I guess we do have to have eyes for So Naive. He's won three of five. He's a big, strong, scopey horse as well. He's only going to get better and better as he fills that frame out. Uh, so, you know, that Northland Breeder Stakes, it's been a decent form race in the past. You know, the, some, some very good horses have come out and won the, that uh, Northland Breeder Stakes Hawks Bay Guineas double. Have a look at Whiskey and Roses. Just like uh, Captured by Love, just not aided by the barrier draws. But uh, boy, a horse who's really stepped up in the last couple. Um, the Barry draw really just has me just a little bit worried, but geez, there's some class here. And we just haven't seen the ceiling of this horse. I guess a real acid test uh, for this one, Lee. Yeah, and the second horse there came out and won pretty easy next start as well, uh, A Rod. So, uh, look, I think if there is one to uh, sort of uh, get back on the running, if they go too hard up front, Whiskey and Roses, I saw him at uh, Ellerslie last week in a track gallop, and he looks spot on. Yeah, there's a pretty high ceiling here. If the draw had been better, I would have suggested that this is a good uh, top three chance and well capable of winning the race. Being by Bellardo, maybe we need a little bit of uh, softness in the track condition, but 
Yeah, there is a high ceiling uh, around that particular horse. I think maybe not Saturday just with the draw, but we'll be winning uh, further on into the season. Well, Tony Pike knows how to win a Hawks Bay Guineas, of course, and this year he lines up Poetic Champion. He's a real warrior and uh, does everything very professionally, so um, he's definitely held his condition well. Um, couldn't be happy with his work and he's very bright in himself, so uh, he'll take some bidding again on Saturday. I don't think he has to do any more than what he did last time. He just needs luck, so, um, yeah, he just has to do what he did and if he's good enough, he'll be finishing over the top of them. Yeah, he hasn't had a lot of luck, the horse. Um, I think he's really gone on since the old rocker. Uh, the 1400 is ideal. Uh, we're going to get another decent track by the looks. Uh, and I just would love to see him draw a gate where he can get every chance. And yeah, I think the 1400 is a big key for him. Yeah, he's great. Very happy with him. He was just too fresh at Wanganui the other day. It was a bit of a hold up at the start. And he had run his race before he jumped out of the barriers, unfortunately, on a, a track that was probably a bit holding for him. But he either wants a loose, wet track or probably better ground, which he definitely will get on Saturday. And I think up to the 1400 metres on the quicker track will suit him. I think a few people are expecting us to go forward, which is going to put some speed into it, and we opted to ride him a bit quieter to hopefully get a mile as a three-year-old, and so that gave Poetic Champion a pretty easy lead off front, and he kicked off, and he's pretty lethal when he's like that. So no, nah, he um, he was really strong through the line, and, yeah, encouraging. No, a really good run. Um, Ken and Bev's filly was just too good on the day, and uh, but her closing sectionals were very, very good, so we're happy with where she's at. I think for me the horse that's really gone in that really strong upward profile uh, from two-year-old was is Savaglee. So I'm going to go with Savaglee. I was really impressed once it got clear. It's, it's fresh up if it was fantastic. I think the cult has gone uh, up a level into its three-year-old season. So I'm going to go with Savaglee. Might be a bit of a match race here between the top two, but it's a race where you'll find plenty of winners. Yeah, there's a uh, pretty strong field, as we all know. The Hawks Bay Guineas is a great lead-up for the uh, 2000 Guineas. Um, Captured by Love, uh, she's the only filly in the race, and uh, look, they haven't won the race since 2000. Sing Along was the last filly to win the Hawks Bay Guineas, but uh, I'm with you, Bevan. Uh, yeah, Savick Lee, um, he doesn't have to improve too much on his last start run to win. Yep, no argument with me uh, either, lads. I'm with Savick Lee. Just love what uh, the horse has been doing. A beautiful horse who's only getting better and better sectionally. Very, very good, but... There's uh, just no lack of depth in this year's Hawks Bay Guineas. I don't think you could put a line through any of them. Uh, so Savick Lee will have to be on his top four map. OK, that'll be race number five on Saturday. And you'll catch the big Saturday from 11 o'clock. <music> Leith, start us away. Your race tracker. Um, I'll take you to the uh, open 1,400 metre last week. Uh, the, at Ellerslie, uh, like orchestra was... Uh, on the outside there, but if you look at the uh, Tony Pike horse, Val de Soldo, um, she actually uh, ran the fastest 200 metres in the race and uh, very strong through the long line as well. Um, she's uh, entered probably uh, on the 5th of October, a rating 75 race at Matter Matter. She'll be awfully hard to beat back in her own rating grade. I'm also taking into Ellerslie and Twain. Goodness me, it was set a task, this particular horse. Should have run last. Ashley holds in there to run third. The source had been uh, wide and working and then went forward, kept on working, was into the straight, still working. Should have run last, the source. As long as it isn't taking too much out of it, Twain is close to a victory. Yeah, pretty brave performance, uh, undoubtedly. I'm taking to the uh, Ashburton trials from last week. The horse in front, Air Park Hustler, was given a, a lovely trip here in the trial, just uh, saved ground. And uh, But the, the time was good, and I just really like what we saw late from this horse, Air Park Hustler, for Michael and Matthew Pittman. Uh, there was six and a half lengths back to the third horse. Uh, you can see there's a, a fair bit up uh, the sleeve of Air Park Hustler. Right, one for you thoroughbred fans. I've got a, a pacer for you, and this is a good horse. Marketplace in the Regan Todd colours. Have a look at him up the straight at Addington. They've buzzed a 27 quarter up front. He's hanging for the most part of the straight. Wouldn't balance up until about the 100 metres, and then he just lets down very powerfully over the concluding stages. He's beat up a really good field there. Some group ones coming up for him. Certainly one to put in the locker. Here is the summary of our race trackers today. Val de Zoldo for Leith, Twain for Bevan Air Park, Hustler there for Aiden, and for myself, Marketplace. Good day, Rickard and Park on Saturday as well. We have a nine race card kicking off there at 12.15. Aiden, weather and track? 
At the moment it's okay, but uh, as we saw, we heard earlier on, there's a little bit of rain coming, so just how much effect that has uh, will be interesting. That rail's out a long way, nine metres uh, to the 1,011 uh, for that final kilometre. So high of 16 degrees on Saturday, but yeah, it's, it's hard to get too confident that we're going to have, uh, you know, uh, not a rain affected track, Matt. A 1400 metre feature is the Marshall Battery's open handicap perfect scenario who was superb first up over 1200 off the track the entire way he was victorious there 310 favourite times ticking first up 480 Epi Bell at 550 has a slight weight swing in her favour over perfect scenario and specialty hood should keep improving through this campaign at $8.50. Perfect scenario, Aiden first up record in park, couldn't have been any more impressive. Absolutely, uh, beat home Matt Scott who finishes, that's a horse off uh, perfect scenarios back, who goes to the group one uh, Arrowfield stud plate this weekend. So interesting uh, form line, ran the quickest last 200. The horse who, who did win the uh, the white robe last year, just loves in the south. Uh, Epi Bell was pretty good, I, I agree Matt, it's a, uh, it's a kilogram and a half swing on a three length margin on perfect scenario, but I thought Epi Bill was eye catching. Leith, how did you assess this form lead up? Yeah, I thought um, perfect scenario was probably um, a little bit unexpected. Obviously, he was having his first run down south for a while, and you, you would think natural improvement up to 1400 metres. Uh, Narco Haley gets on this week, he takes three kilos off, and he's had one ride on the horse for a win as well. Yeah, I thought perfect, perfect scenario was fantastic. I actually preferred specialty. Uh, over Epi Bill because the rider almost fell off at the start on the special. He had to go back and then got held up at the 200 metres when Epi Bill came across it and had to restrain. And then was the match of Epi Bill to the line. So it gets in at a really light weight. As Matt said, it will train on this horse. Look, it's at a really good price for me at $8.50. So I was pretty keen uh, there. We also welcome back the old boy uh, to his uh, happy, happy hunting ground. And time's ticking. I think he's domiciled now. Uh, down with Albie's son now and look he looks as though he was coming up nicely hard to probably see him winning at this sort of trip at this point in his career but he's lost none of his vim and vigour there Leith with this draw. No he certainly looks happy doesn't he um, certainly doesn't look like a nine year old gelding striding out there and uh, yeah, it's uh, Dean's got the horse down in uh, record now. So uh, look, he never goes a bad race. Uh, definitely, you'd have him a sort of a, a top three sort of place bet for sure. Yeah, with the three kilogram claim of uh, Denby Rose take down to fifty six and a half kilograms, he's won three of eight at record, and he's won two of seven fresh up. So uh, he's got to be a chance too. And uh, yeah, LB McGregor not uh, taking his uh, his license out for this season. What a great trainer he was. You know, you think about the you know. Uh, you think about Fritzy Boy, and you think about uh, Times Ticking and Company as well. So, yeah, we'd love to see him go well, especially because they'll be still in the ownership. However, I'm going to go perfect scenario. Uh, I was taking what we saw first up. He's going to be an improver, as uh, you know, like in the Times Ticking case, he's getting older. So I've gone there, but without a great deal of conviction. Lee, who did you find? Yeah, I, I think the uh, second up record of perfect scenario is good as well. Um, look, the step to 1,400 metres, Narco Haley, he's won on him before. Yeah, I, I think he's a, a great bet in the race. Yeah, I'm going to tip a little bit of value. I did like what specialty did uh, for Bruce Tapper on that particular occasion. I think with a clearer run and better start, maybe that might be an issue again on Saturday. But I just thought at eight dollars and fifty cents, I was willing to have an each way play on specialty. Yeah, keep a close eye on Riviera Rebel as well. If that rain comes, might be able to land itself on speed and could be worth a little place nibble. Sticking with Rickard and Park, and we take you to race seven, the Waimakariri Businesses North Canterbury Cup of 2024. John O'Rocco for 20 first flight for 80. Both horses who no doubt will appreciate getting up over a bit more ground. Cork racing well. 550 Lombardi would probably have to improve off its last start run. Aiden, kick us off here with John Old Rocco, who was super impressive, and you just can't help but love him with his willingness to the line. Yeah, I really like this horse. He's won 5 of 16 now. He was a mid-race move to get uh, up outside the leader from Kylie Williams, who sticks with the ship. Uh, a really good performance and just uh, going up two kilograms. It's just how the others come up against it. The horse I was really taken by here is the horse on the inside, fierce flight. Jeez, I thought it was some sort of run. Uh, I, I know he doesn't really like Rickon. He hasn't placed there in four starts, but unleashed the quickest last eight, four, six, and two. And uh, would have moved pin on today. I just really like first flight, especially with the two kilogram swing. Leith, your thoughts on the lead up? Yeah, um, Billy's getting a really good record with the uh, Tiakia stable at the moment as well. So, um, 
Yeah, look, um, cork probably sort of, uh, if it does get to that sort of soft sort of range, um, cork really comes into the race as well with three kilos off the back. But uh, I, I, it's hard to go past the favourite. I thought he was uh, really good in that race. Uh, he's got to get, you know, 2,000 metres is going to suit him. And uh, Kylie Williams, she knows the horse well too. Matt was keen on this horse, John El Rocco, and look, he's right on the mark. I thought that was a really good uh, performance, and he may be one horse to follow through the Cups this season. I think he's coming to it really, really nicely. I agree with you, Leith. If the weather comes, then Cork becomes a decent sort of play on the day. I actually like what she did uh, on those track conditions, and any further range will probably come right into this and shorten quite a lot in this particular market. Now, Lofty's gift is uh, an interesting one. He comes out of a race uh, at Wingatui. He's only had the one run here uh, at Rickon, and that was over the 2,000 metres behind Laquita, and just battled away that day. It was on a heavy 10-track uh, condition, but, look, he's won 6 of 26, so he's got a fair bit of uh, quality of the source, and, look, he's another that would really appreciate... Uh, some rain about his one four of ten on heavy track conditions but can i see him beating the other form line left probably not no probably not either um I, I, terry mosey gets on this week um look he hasn't gone bad since he's been down south he's been pretty honest um but like you said i just probably want to see a bit more cut in the ground for the lofty's gift yeah i tend to agree boys uh he did win four in a row last preparation including second up so uh yeah maybe upside on that factor okay what's mark walker thinking with fierce flight 2,000 metres could be almost a bit short for him already, uh, but as I say, his grand final was the New Zealand Cup, so uh, as long as he's racing well in the lead-up runs, uh, you know, he's got to be a major player come New Zealand Cup day. I think she's been crying out for that 2,000 for a wee while, so uh, we're a bit worried after last start the rain wasn't going to come, but they got a bit yesterday, and it's supposed to be there Thursday, Friday, so... Uh, hopefully we'll get that and she'll get her 2,000 metres uh, and then she's coming home after that. We'll see what's up here for her. It's been a good preparation for Cork. I, I'm convinced that Donovan Cooper did claim three last time out despite what's uh, in the race book. So uh, just you might just want to have that checked as we'll try and do in the, in the coming days. Anyhow, I'm with Fierce Flight. I think he can turn the tables on John L. Rocker despite Mark Walker's concerns that he's looking for further already. I thought his run was very, very good and he's on track for the New Zealand Cup. Leith, who do you have on top? Yeah, I'm going for John O'Rocker. Um, you get an odd surge of about five dollars. Look, he's got 58 kilos, but he's a big, strong horse, and uh, I think the 2,000 metres is really going to suit him as well. Can I agree with Leith? Uh, I think Donald Rocco is the one to beat, and maybe one to follow out of the south as we get into the big staying race. So I think this horse is really going to step up to the mark uh, this preparation, Matt. Well, no doubt Fierce Flight's being targeted to the Martin Collins New Zealand Cup, and you can currently get $12 for him in the futures, as you can get yourself an odd surge around him on Saturday from Rickerton Park. On every single race, maximum bid, of course, is one hundred dollars there from record and park on saturday and we'll be kicking that meeting off at 12 15. we've got a friday meeting out of tarapa leith it's got a bit of a saturday feel about it with the depth though yeah certainly some uh, great fields on friday and the tracks at present it's a soft seven uh thursday morning and the worst thing is tomorrow morning there's uh, talked to Andrew Carsons today and he said look the track's probably going to be a soft six by Thursday night but there is a bit of rain Friday maybe between six and ten mils before race one. Okay this is a cracking field the risk management group 1200 we will rock five dollars wild night five dollars master Fay at 650 Petrucci at seven and street gossip at seven dollars and fifty cents how's that for a good betting race leith and we'll start you away with that we will rock and master Fay, of course in the fox bridge we well, certainly loves tarapa um he, he'll be leading in the race as well so um he's one of those horses when he's good he's really good and uh look i just put a line for his last run a little bit as well it was in the fox bridge plate and he sort of only died the last sort of uh 300 metres where he probably just overdid it a little bit in front as well. Run was very good. Uh, the, the real query about this is where does Master Faye go, where does Wild Knight go uh, and it sounds like they both might be heading to, to Hastings for the better track. I'm just not too sure but uh, nonetheless we will rock, gets to the right spot, probably gets track conditions to suit and he loves Tarapa. Uh, he's won three of six there so you've got to respect him here Bevan. I just think he's uh, the type of horse who does need to hug the rail and that's why he's no good down the shoot at Trentham. When he gets up against the rail he's really really good and this horse here in Petrucci, look she's 
put up a couple of spectacular performances. This was a soft win uh, at the trials recently, Leith, and if she gets that one good suck run into it, she does possess a very quick turn of foot. Yeah, she's one of those horses that sort of gets back in her races, but um, her trial at Rotorua, I hope he never let go of her, and... Uh, Look, I know the stable are really happy with her this week, and uh, she gets down to that perfect weight of 54 kilos as well. Yeah, very good. Uh, loves it fresh as well, two from two. And we remember what she did, like, uh, was it the Concord last year when she, she just burned home? I think it behind Master Faye that day as well from memory. Uh, I'd have to check that. Street Gossip was good, uh, resuming, wasn't uh, she? This was at Harwood. I had trialled up really nicely leading in. Uh, Rehan Gorham takes the three off now to the 51 for Alan Sharrick. And... Yeah, there's uh, enough about this performance to say, yeah, riding contentionally. Yeah, certainly sweet, sweet gossip. Um, she was supposed to race at New Plymouth uh, a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, and she hurt herself in the gate. So she's had a little bit of a let up. Um, I think if that track gets out to that sort of heavy uh, range, well, 51 kilos, uh, she definitely has some merit in the race. Yeah, there's obviously been a couple of issues uh, with her. Uh, we haven't seen her for a period of time, but she was brought back here specifically to get to the big sprints. Uh, and look, we'll see Saturday if she's actually going to get there. Uh, but she's got good ability. That wasn't the strongest race that uh, she took out there. So she faces some much uh, better grade on Saturday. But that weight and the trainer, etc., it all adds up to a, a pretty good performance, Matt. Well, we know Wild Lights, uh, Wild Knight rather, is uh, an exceptionally good horse on his day. Aidan asked Mark, Mark Walker about how he compares to preparations in the past. Well, he's sound at the moment. He he. He just had a lot of problems, but hopefully with maturity, and he had a really good um, spell at Tiaka Stud, so uh, just hopefully he can recapture when he won the uh, James and Annie Sarton. He was explosive that day, so if he recaptures that form, uh, it'll be terrific. Yeah, well, he's just an honest horse, you know, and I've tried to place him the best I can. Unfortunately, at Wanganui, it's a long way to go. He didn't have any luck in the run. He got caught three wide in the open. And that race, they ended up coming down the outside fence. So he wasn't in the right place from the get-go. Oh, she's a bit of an enigma. We, you know, we've tried a lot of different things with her, but uh, it's D-Day for her on uh, Friday. If she doesn't perform, she might be visiting Savile. She appears to me that she is uh, very competitive in herself. She does try hard and all that. Uh, the draws are a bit of a question mark. Ten uh, at Tarrath, it's, it's not easy. Um, and like she drew average last time as well, but slightly worse this time. But just got to work out how we're going to ride. I'm not sure yet. Um, but yeah, uh, I think she gets a nice trip. She'll be right on it. Yeah, she's got good form at Tarrath. She ran second in the Cambridge Reader Stakes, so uh, still looks a bit tubby. So she'll probably improve with the run. OK, uh, just a, a little bit of a word of warning around Patricia there, wasn't it, from Mark Walker. Uh, there's some good horses here, but th there is that uh, that query, where do they go? Uh, for that reason, I'm going We Will Rock. It uh, looks almost certain this horse will be at Tarapa. And if there's no Master Fay and if there's no Wild Knight, that makes it a whole lot easier, Lee. Yeah, it certainly does. Uh, yeah, hearing Mark Walker's comments, yeah, I sort of want to change my pick now. <laughs> Um, look, Patricia, she has won fresh up twice before. I like the way she trials, 54 kilos. Um, in the race, so yeah, Jaffe's going as good as ever as well. Lance Noble's really happy with her, and she's uh, three three dollars a place as well. No jumping off the walker, uh, lethal. Uh, we will rock for me. I think he'll hug the rail when he powers up. You can tell uh, before the corner when he's right on his A game. If you can find the rail, and that's okay on a Friday, then I think he'll power up, and he'll be very very difficult to beat. I did quite like his run in the Foxbridge. It was only the last 50 metres or so that he really knocked up, and he had overdone it early. Morning. You're looking forward to the sixth on the card, the BCD Group Mile. Great to see the return of No Compromise up the top of the book. He's currently a $17 chance. Snazzy Tavi at $3.40 is the current favourite Snazzy Tavi for Cambridge Stud and the Richardson Norville Stable. Islington Lass, who's third up into her preparation after a second up win. Dionysus at 10 out to He's a Doozy at $13. Snazzy Tavi, Bevan Sweeney is clearly a horse with a lot of ability and has the plum draw here. Yeah, she was exceptional this day. She put a really good field away in a couple of big, big hops. And look, I've gone back through uh, the fresh up performance of Snazzy Tavi. And when you go back through the sectional, she was actually pretty strong in this particular race. She gets back to Tarapa. She gets in at that uh, comfortable weight, clearly. And just the way she won this and what she'd done prior to this 
in her preparation. She's got a fair bit of class about here, and I think you might see the best of her on Friday. Yeah, I think she's a big improvement off the uh, last start race in the Wait for Age, um, Tarzino. Look, yeah, she's had two starts at Tarafa for two wins, so she really likes the track. Warren Kennedy, uh, 54 kilos, is barrier one. Plenty to like about her, for sure. Yeah, and she was OK uh, resuming the Tarzina. The run was good. Uh, as one in Easter, of course, at uh, Tarafa, that was the race we looked at. Beat home Chattahoochee, who's OK too. Uh, that would be a horse who will definitely be improved uh, by uh, the first up run at Ruakaka. Outside that, uh, boy, just, this horse just gets me. She is she is an absolute beauty. So many times she looks beaten, and boy, she looked beaten this day. Uh, I just like it. Still, you go back and watch the replay. How does she get up and win? She can do that, and I think she'll be doing it again this weekend. Some win this late at Tarapa. Yeah, it's certainly uh, sharp and smart. Sort of went up to win, and you know the weight difference told in the end. And. Uh, Look, she's, she never goes a bad race, and you think she you know, fresh up over a mile this day, she'll definitely improve. Um, look, she's well rated, senior jockey on Ryan Elliott on this week, 56 and a half. Um, she's got to be awfully hard to beat, especially at Tarafa, her track she loves. She is such a competitor. She's such a competitor. You remember back to the one at Trinkton when she was short, and you thought that day that she wasn't going to win. Well, she was definitely not winning uh, at Tarapa, and then she just found a way to come through on the inside of the track conditions. Oh, look, I always, I'm always i getting the impression from her that she's even calling out for more uh, ground as Linton Lass, but she's a major player, Matt, in uh, what is a cracking race on Friday. Dionysus is a $10 chance, and uh, Aidan had a chat and asked Robert Wellwood, co-trainer, what they've done since its most recent run. Look, not a lot. He's, sort of, he's come on nicely from that. It's only sort of 10 days between runs, um, so... He, uh, he goes into it well, but he's clearly going to be suited further, um, you know, going further post this run. Whatever she does, um, she's got a good draw and all that, she'll definitely improve. She can win, and, but even if she does win, she'll improve more. Uh, I just think he's a really good poly track horse. Uh, now he's into open handicap on the grass. He, you just got to take him with trust a little bit. But in the autumn, there's plenty of races that will suit him back on, on the poly track series. Elegant lady, the other one uh, there, has she? Yeah, just a uh, mile will be far too short for her, so look for her once she's getting to sort of 2,400. He's probably going to go through to races like the Waikato Cup and Wellington Cup and, and races like that, so um, this is just a stepping stone. Hopefully uh, a couple of weeks after uh, Friday he'll find a 2,000 or, or, or something, and that'll be right up his alley. Obviously, there's a few connections there just playing down their chances, which you wish you can understand. They are looking for further, but geez, there's some quality in this race. There'd be a few there you could say, why aren't they in the Arrowfield stud plate? Uh, one of those is Islington Lass for mine. Gee, she's got me. She gets me every time. Respect around Snazzy Tavi for sure, but uh, when the chips are down, I'm going to put them uh, on Islington Lass. Yeah, I talked to Alan uh, during the week and he said, look, if she comes out and wins this week, uh, she'll be running in the Live Mall two weeks' time at uh, Hawke's Bay. So, uh, look, I think Ryan Elliott's on, uh, 56 and a half. Um, yeah, I'm, I think you're right here, eh, Rod? I think she can definitely win. Yeah, I definitely think Snazzy Tavi can win, and I think she's in for a massive preparation if she does uh, as well. There's a fair bit of quality here. I will say, no compromises flying. And behind the scenes, had a, a trick gallop Sunday. I know they're really, really happy with no compromise care, the way he's coming up this season as well. So he's a real watch for a couple of weeks at the Bay. OK, we've got a nine-race card there. 12 21 will be the first, and that'll be right here on Trackside 1. Friday night, Manukato, 11.15 from the Valley. It's one of uh, Australasia's great sprinting races, of course. Growing Empire is the favourite at 4.80. I wish I win, who was slashing first up at $5.50. Estriella has been the mover, eight into $6.50, and there has been support for recommendation. The other Kieran Maha runner, which is 15 into $12. Aiden, I wish I win on the clock. Could not have been any better first up. Yeah, absolutely. It was a, a tr tremendous performance. Uh, and behind Hayasugi, who was very good, uh, obviously they stay at the Valley again. I just wonder whether, you know, the Valley is really I Wish I Win's track. And for that reason, you know, you look at what Hayasugi does here in running second. And this was the one uh, that we were we were really liking in the, in the Moor. Uh, very good. Does come up against some good horses here. The likes of Growing Empire, who's, who's won four of the last five. But... Yeah, I, I, obviously, real respect around I Wish I Win, who will fly the Kiwi flag in the Everest. But I did like what we saw from Hayasugi, Lee. 
Yeah, she was really good. Um, Jamie Carr sticks as well. She's only got 50 kilos. Barrier two, a lot to like about her run. Um, I thought, I wish I win. I thought he was really good. Um, I, I reckon the, he's drawn the outside gate at the Valley, but I think that's a big plus. Look at uh, Growing Empire, does have that good support. Having a look at the uh, Poseidon Stakes, where here's a three-year-old colt who's just found himself as a winner. He's gone St Alban Stakes, Breeder Stakes, McNeil Stakes and Poseidon Stakes, all at stakes level and all with a bit of authority about him. Yeah, he goes around in those uh, Yulong colours, Leith, and yeah, there's just something about him. He's got a bit of spunk. Yeah, it's certainly uh, Craig Williams on this week too. 52 kilos at the weight for age. Barrier seven's perfect, and the best thing about him, he's actually won at the Valley before as a two-year-old. I was with Hayasugi in the Moya Stakes, and uh, I'm going to stick again. I thought his run was, was terrific, and uh, I think she'll be hard to beat. Leith, who are you with? Yeah, I'm going to go for the Zoo Star Colt, uh, Glowing Emperor. Um, look, they'll be uh, really uh, trying to get a, a group one on his uh, CV, and uh, I think you'll see this Colt at stud one day. Well, speaking of Colts at stud, we saw the run to the Rose a couple of weeks ago, and we've made our way to the big finale. The Group 1 Golden Rose with James Squire, broadsiding 3.20. First up for Team Godolphin is 2.80 out to 3.20. Traffic Warden 4.20 into $4 after its most impressive win in the run to the Rose. Storm Boy is 4.60 into $4.50 and Linebacker 7 into $6. Not too much movement outside of that. Some very, very good colts going around here, Leith. Geez, the runner Storm Boy was massive to hold on for third. I, we, what you don't sort of see here was uh, he missed a kick, not one to bag jockeys, but you can't burn the uh, candle at both ends, and he nearly got away with it. So, um, look, linebacker was good from back in the field as well, and uh, obviously the Colt Traffic Warden was well ridden to win, and uh, Zach Lloyd uh, gets taken off this week for Benny Mellon. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Uh, but he'll do a good job again. Like you say, linebacker was very good uh, from a, a long way back. And, and Storm Boy, yeah, hats off to the horse. Um, yeah, no real knot because of uh, how much work he'd had to do. And you know, that's a, a, a pretty good uh, resuming effort there in the run to the roses. The other one, Leith, and I know you are super keen on this. You made it your your tracker here. I think even was it as close as last week broadsiding horse who's got uh, any amount of ability is one four of seven. Geez, James Cummings got a hand in this race, doesn't he? He certainly does. Uh, this is a proper horse, I think. Uh, look, I reckon he's a Caulfield Guineas horse, Cox Plate horse. Um, look, it's, it's going to be a really good training effort. Uh, it's pretty hard to win the Golden Rose fresh up from a break. Um, normally they need to sort of one run into it, but I think the way he's going at the trials, he's flying J-Mac on barrier one. I'm all over him this week. Yeah, for, for me, I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to go Traffic Warden with the run under his belt. Uh, that's my selection uh, in the big one. Leith, uh, it sounds like you're you're with the, the stable, mate. Yeah, I'm all over broadsiding like last week. Um, look, he's actually drifting, so um, he might get out to that sort of $3.80 price as well. But, um, yeah, race nine, it's going to be a great race, and I think broadsiding will be going close. Be a great day there from Rose Hill on Saturday. Molly Bloom second up in the ninth on the program as well, amongst some other very, very good horses resuming for their spring campaign. The Trackside Everest competition. You can win a trip for two to watch Trackside's slot horse, I Wish I Win. You'll win flights, two nights accommodation in Sydney and VIP tickets to Randwick. Trackside.co.nz or scan the QR code on your screen right now if you fancy yourself a trip to the Everest. Leith, your best of the weekend? I'm going to give him one more chance. Um, he's got me a few times, Slipper Island. Uh, look, we've seen him unlucky on a number of occasions. Race for uh, Opie Bossom's on. Look, he's $5.50. He's got a better gait this time. and It's a pretty even sort of uh, rating 65 race, but I think it'd be awfully hard to beat this week. Gee, you can run into a brick wall, but he's got OP. Uh, like it. Uh, I just hope Robbie lines it up. He's scratched it a few, few times. I think he's looking for a better track condition, but if he lines up at uh, Woodville on a Saturday in a field that doesn't have a lot of exposed form, like it, Ace will be winning. Boy, yeah, I thought Stephen Marsh had found the right race with this horse. Uh, love poem. <laughs> it's back into Maiden coming after running second in a Group 3 Taranaki uh, two-year-old classic. Third to Alabama Lass and captured by Love the other way around, of course, in the Mutter Mutter Breeder Stakes. And second to Domain Ace in a, in a stakes race. Has been to the races three times with three stakes placings and goes round in a, in a Maiden. I thought beautifully placed. And you're getting better than two bucks. 
Wag Star's a good horse. He's first up at Addington on Friday. Dollar ninety-five currently for him. Couple of workouts under his belt. He's been super, and I reckon he'll come out and uh, give them the go by first up for the Craig Ferguson stable with Mark Hurrell in the sulky. Let's recap our best bets. Love poem for Aiden on Friday out of Tarapa. Now Rosso's got an interesting one. This dog on debut for the Lisa Cole Kennels called More Magic. Draws the outside box in the first at Whanganui on Friday. Friday. Wag Star Race 6 Addington Invisible for the Whale at Race 8 at Alexandra Park. Slipper Island Leith Race Number 4 on Saturday and Like a Ace for Bevan in the 8th at Woodville. Thank you Leith, thank you Bevan, thank you Aidan as well as everybody else in Behind the Scenes. We'll catch you next week on The Form.